strong. going on everybody welcome to the second episode of the spike lemonade podcast um your host josh dinato i'm here tonight with charlie mccormick c mac in the flesh yes sir uh we are in the caribbean the uh spiked spike lemonade podcast brought to you in the caribbean today the lemon lads here uh, doing a little vacation and also tournament turned into a singles tournament because there was only there was only how many of us are there uh, five look. of us yeah playing? there's five of us yeah. playing uh, so it's been fun. It's been really hot. It's been a blast, and kind of wanted to get Charlie on here to get his take on what he feels about the Car- <laughs> about the Caribbean <laughs> and and playing Spike with the Lemon Lads uh, in general here. So what what do you think? How you like the Caribbean so uh, far? It's a blast. You know, I was in St. Martin last summer, but I gotta say St. Thomas is a little bit better. And just being with all the boys and just playing Spike ball has definitely been fun for sure. Absolutely. So, dude. I would like to get, we're going to get everybody on here, the Lemon Lads, tonight, one at a time. But I wanted to get your take on how you got started playing spike ball. What was your first? Um, Wow. I would probably say it just started off as like a beach game. Mm -hmm. I would say at first, definitely. I feel like most people probably did. And I just really enjoyed it. And I felt like I was pretty good. And I have to give credit to Mike, uh, Mike Garrett, who will be on here later. Uh, Me and him practiced a lot and just played a lot just because like, I don't know, we just... I uh, had a bond from spike ball, I guess. And I, I don't really know how we started playing spike ball. How old like, were you when you first started? Let's go there. How old are you now? I'm 20. So I would say I've been playing. I've probably been playing for like five years. Maybe okay. not Maybe not like competitive or consistently, but You've, I feel like it hasn't It's not. It hasn't been new. You know what I mean? Yes. I feel like there was just a, some point in my life, maybe when I was like 17 or 18, where all of a sudden I was like, you know what, maybe I could take this a little more seriously or just get better, or like really like take it. it as like a sport almost, you know what I mean? I love it, well that kind of transitions nicely into my first question for you, which is, um, as an athlete, you Mm -hmm. played tennis growing up. Yep. Uh, First singles at his high school. You know what Uh, I mean. Yeah, play soccer right now in college at? Lebanon Valley College. Lebanon Valley College, shout out. And I've seen you play a little basketball here. So let's talk- I can hoop, I can hoop. Yes, let's talk about those three sports. (laughs) How do you think that they translate into helping you with spike Um, ball? Well obviously soccer, just like athletic workouts, I think just staying in shape and like spike ball you don't necessarily have to be in shape but I think it's definitely an advantage just to be athletic it's like basketball I would say just like jumping and just like quickness and agility soccer I don't really know necessarily maybe just like quick feet yeah I would just say footwork and then tennis um, maybe just like the way the ball moves and just understanding the way like if you hit a ball a certain way how that's going to affect like the rotation of the ball that's what I would say but just being an athlete in general I think just helps your hand eye coordination and everything like that so Absolutely. That's probably the biggest advantage. How about if I ask you to rank for me basketball, tennis, and soccer in terms of how they've translated or how you think they translate into spike ball? So if spike someone ball. came from basketball, someone mm-hmm. came from soccer, someone came from tennis, how would you rank the three sports and how they translate over? I probably would put soccer at the last position just because like, that's just like your feet. And I feel like, just in spike ball, I mean, everyone knows if you play spike ball, you're only really going to use your feet as like a last resort, you know what I mean? So yeah. I was, I'll put soccer at the last, I'll probably put tennis at second just because I feel like it is important, like I don't have the best serves, I can't cut necessarily as good as some of these guys over here, but just understanding like the motions and like how the spike, or how like the ball when it hits the net, why it goes a certain direction, why it does a certain thing. So I would say tennis second and then basketball one just because I mean, I love to block shots. I blocked Mike all last night. I don't know how many times. <laughs> you know what I mean? But um, I think, like, body blocks and just, like, getting in certain positions. I feel like basketball, I don't know why, but I feel like basketball is good for that. Just, like, getting, just jumping and just, like, being athletic. I, I love think it. that translates to spike ball more than just, like, soccer. Because soccer, I don't know, it's just... Not yeah. as much. I yeah. like the way, I like what you said about how you know the I mean? hands, how the hands work into it in soccer, obviously yeah. a game with no hands, but footwork, still yeah. important. Soccer could come into play if you maybe want to do like a, like you're comfortable with your chest, maybe just mm-hmm. like a body That's lock. fair. But you have to be. What um, about a keeper? Keeper, okay, keeper changes everything. Keeper if you're changes. a keeper, then I put soccer at one yeah. because you should be good with your hands, yeah. you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you should be used to that. So I'll, keeper changes everything, but a normal field player just like I am, yeah. play center attacking mid, four goals last season. Um, I would just say I don't know, I would just say that keeper definitely changes it, but a normal player, not too much. 
I love it. I love it. Okay, let's go into this year and into next year. Let's go 2022 in particular. Mm -hmm. What are your spike ball goals for 2022? Play a few tournaments. What do you want to do? Well, obviously, I want to play a few tournaments. I haven't played as consistently lately. Mm -hmm. I've only been playing here and there just with uh, the Lemon Lads, as I said. Um, I would definitely want to say I just want to practice certain things. Like, don't just play for no reason. Obviously, I want to practice more. But um, when I do practice, like, working on certain serves, cut serves, and then just, like, playing with the no-hit zone because I don't have much experience with that. And, that I mean, that's fairly new. I don't know how long that's been around. Maybe a year. I don't yep. really know. But exactly. um, I don't have the best experience with that. So I think more experience with that and then just playing more consistent would be the best because, uh, you know, as a D3 athlete, like, I have a lot of school, soccer, and it's just like, I just got to devote a little bit more time just to the sport, you know what I mean? So that would definitely be one thing. Um, and then obviously tournaments, you know, more exposure, the better, yep. I would definitely say. I could see, like, all of you guys here, like, I've maybe known you guys for, like, obviously I know Mike for a while, but, like, the rest of you, maybe, like, six months to a year, maybe. Yeah. And I can just tell the growth just from playing. Like, I know you guys have been putting a lot of work in. And just playing, just naturally, just you just get better every day. So I would just start by just playing, and then breaking down certain aspects of the game for sure. We'll I love playing it. for twenty twenty two, and uh, obviously get premiere too. You know, obviously, I mean, uh, maybe not twenty twenty two, but like, I mean, you gotta I, put a goal out there. You know what I mean? Absolutely, shoot, I do. I love I mean, it. Yeah. Uh, what about this? My final question for you before we go into like what our finishing note here. Yeah. Uh, June 11th, what's the likelihood we see you on June 11th in Philadelphia? You know, we, you guys know we're all East Coast guys. It's mm -hmm. not that far. 20 minutes away. 20 minutes away. Um, my man is staying the summer in Wildwood, so if you're having any fun in Wildwood this summer, hit me up. Hit him up. You know, good, I'll be there. a good time. Yeah, for sure. Uh, will you be there on, you know, in Philly? I think if you had to say right now. If I had to say right now, I can't guarantee anything. Right. What I'm, not gonna, I'm not going to I'm not going to cap to the podcast and be like I'm 100% going to be there. What do we but think? But I wouldn't that? say no. I mean, I would say it's like 50-50 right now. Okay. Just That's to be fair. honest. Just because I know, I mean, at first I would have to make sure I mean, I th I'm sure I could get off like work. I'm working as a fuzzy wudgy man down the beach. If you guys it. know what that is, just pushing ice cream. Uh just, you know, it. Choco, Taco, you know what I mean? <laughs> but uh and I'm also on a summer soccer team too, but no excuses. Like I definitely will be able to get summer off team. If I, want. I didn't yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, I'm on a summer team. So like U twenty threes. Oh, beautiful. Just to get some playing in before the season. But um, I mean, I definitely could go to Philly. I think it would just be one. I would make sure I have to be free, mm -hmm. and then two would just be like a partner. But I'm sure there's plenty of guys that yeah, plenty of quality guys. guys. A partner. Plenty. So of I would say guys. I would say fifty fifty, but um. But we'll see. We'll see. I would happens. love to be there. I mean, it sounds like a blast. I'm yeah. Like, well, I'm sure these guys are gonna get premiere there too. I would hope so. We'll bring the rest of the guys on here um, one at a time. I'm here with C-Mac. Doesn't play Spike all that often. Uh, like I said, maybe the past year has played, like, what do you say, maybe 10 to 15 times yeah. in the past, yeah, 10, past year or so. Uh, and he's very good. Natural athlete. I've seen him now play basketball. Um, obviously, Spike. Anything we've done, he's been good at. Dude, it's been, it's been a blast having you. I want to have you again more. If you get into a tournament, let's say Philly, we pod right after. I'd love to have you back. I'll be always there. man. I love you, bro. Later. Let's go. <laughs> Bang. Alrighty, Mike. Welcome to the podcast. Been wanting to have you on here for a little bit. We're only on episode two, so really, how long have I been waiting? Not that long. Yeah. <laughs> so I wanted, bro, if you could tell the people about who you are, how you met the Lemon Lads, um, and uh, why you like spike ball. Yeah, sure. So I'm Mike, and um, I met. So I joined the group kind of when I po made a post on the Spikeball app and then Ryan messaged me just randomly. I guess he saw my post and then messaged me to come play because they were getting on in like an indoor facility kind of, like on Tuesday nights. So I came out to one of those uh, pickup sessions and then from then on I kind of kept on playing with them. Absolutely. Yeah. What do you think, um, what do you think, it, what do you think it means to be a lemon lad right now? You think like there's like we just anybody could come and play right now, or no, do you think we've leveled up? We definitely leveled up. Like if you want to like be in our group, you have to like really want to play and be better, and like be dedicated to trying to get as far as possible in the sport. That's that's where we're all at right now. For sure, I agree a hundred percent. I think that we don't whether anyone can play with us, so it's not that like we would let anyone come and play. We the more the merry. We'd like have more people to come and play with us, but we like to try and get as good as we can. Uh, kind of as quickly as we can here as we're all shooting to earn Premier uh, this year. Um, we had Charlie on a little bit earlier. 
he talked about his intro to the game of Spikeball. How old were you when you played Spikeball for the first time? I might have been like, I don't know, I'm 20 now. I might have been like 12 or 13 when I first played. Really? Yeah, I'm like, yeah. Because I had a couple friends, Jake and Burl, we would go camping and they would bring the Spikeball game and we would just play like once or twice a year when I was like very young. Like that was back when like the old net was totally different. Like there's almost no, I don't even know like the official rules at the time, but it was, it was very like, very, very new. I love that. When did you start getting into spike ball in a way where you said, I actually want to go to like some tournaments and make it more than just like I uh, play once a summer with my friends? So the first time I like did anything serious at all with spike ball was last summer. I would say I started going to a few. The first tournament I ever went to was like two Thanksgivings ago. I went to a tournament. And then that following summer, I did like a three or four, I think. But it was all like advanced. It wasn't anything crazy. And that's when I started like really trying. But even at that point, I wasn't really around people who were like anything crazy. So like I wouldn't even count that now as like a ton of competitive experience. It was just tournaments were fun. But like, I would say I really started taking it super, super seriously this past like September, October. Gotcha. So definitely in the past six months or so, you say yeah. you've gone. Yeah. Okay. For sure. Um, episode one, I was here with Ryan Paul. Ryan Paul and Mike teamed up uh, under the team name High Probability in Richmond. Ryan gave a in-depth breakdown of Richmond, but it's cool to get you know two sides. It's cool to get the other side. What did you think? And you don't have to go through game by game like we did in episode one, but where do you think, give me almost like a condensed pool play breakdown and then sort of where things were good and where things, where, where you fell short eventually because you guys lost like we did. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. give me something. Yeah, so pool play was good, except for game one, where Ryan totally just pooped at bed. <laughs> we, won't, we won't talk about it. We won't talk about it. But other than that, we only lost one other game in pool play, so we went five and two. So I would say the main thing that t tournament was was just experience of understanding, helping us understand where we were at in terms of other people within the contender division. Because we really had no idea what we would... We felt confident going into it, but then when we got there, we kind of realized, okay, we need to get a little bit better before we really can compete. So it was a good it was a good eye opener to what we need to do in terms of really just improving our serve and serve receive was the biggest thing we realized we need to level up on, which I think we've done a good job of that since then. So it was, kinda, it was definitely just like a good intro to understanding what we need to do to get Premier because we had no experience in the tour stop before that. So No experience in a contender level tournament. You played in a tour stop before that, that one? Was that, was first, that was my first tour stop ever. Oh, cool. I guess you guys played nationals. I, I, you that, did. Yeah, but yeah. I never. That was my first tour stop. Dang. Cool. Okay, snap. Okay, what about your eventual game that you guys lost um, to be eliminated in round one? We went out in round one, too, so that's yeah. no shade. What? Because I watched that game probably like five points at the end of when our game ended, so I probably watched like a couple minutes, and then I watched the last couple points of the other game. You just guys kind of just looked defeated at one point in time, like, what the heck's going on? We should almost be beating these guys. Oh, no. We, so, what, you know what I mean? What, mm -hmm. what do you think went wrong? No, we definitely, we definitely should have won. I mean, there's no question about it. We beat the first, we won the first game, like, 21. I don't think it was even that close of a match. Like, it was close, but, like, we were comfortably winning. It was, like, 21-16, 21-17. You guys were always in control, kind of, like, one the of those games? The first game, I think, so we, we were like the 22nd seed and they were the 10th seed. So we were like a little bit hesitant as what we're gonna face. Yeah. But then these guys like looked intimidating cause they're like, I don't know, both six foot five. Their team name was like Daddy Long Legs. So mm -hmm. they're really tall, but their serves were, no offense to them, but their serves were not good. It was just like, just kind of, they just put it on without any spin. And so we were like feeling very confident in that regard. And that confidence kind of carried over into like winning the first game. Cause we're like, if we can handle their serves, I mean, that's pretty much the game. But I think personally, like second and third game, I didn't really do that well serving. And we really struggled on defense because they were so long and lanky, they just put the ball anywhere, like super easily. They were very efficient and creative around the net, which gave us a lot of trouble defensively. So, and they were really good on service seed. We didn't ace them once. So that was kind of, mm, we had like two aces. So that was kind of like the main thing was we didn't handle them on defense and we didn't get any serving uh, breaks. Okay, now just to comment on one thing you said, which was they weren't hitting any serves that created a lot of trouble. No. So then do you maybe fair to say that you guys, your setting wasn't as good? Because if they're not landing like insane serves, you know what I'm saying? You're receiving fairly well, oh. and then it's set, you know what I'm saying? Is um, setting becoming an issue? No, we definitely, um, we definitely fell because we were like in a, the probably the most high pressure situation we've ever faced in like our spike ball career. We fell back on old habits of just 
putting it a little bit off net and just wailing on it. Interesting. Okay. And they totally adapted to that and started just playing the long ball and got our a one shallow and one go like receiving. Like not that. even that. They just kind of realized that we were just hitting it hard and they went off net and just received it a little uh, deeper. Okay. So they kind of had us down offensively as well. So we, yeah. So it was just all around a good learning experience to figure out what we need to do and how we need to do it for the next door stop. Perfect. Perfect transition. I think that of the lemon lads, uh, I think that I have heard Mike reference and talk about the importance to him of earning premier this year, probably the most, which I think is cool. Um, so my question to you is, why is it important, given you're just in the first year of really playing competitively like all of us, you know, why does it mean so much to you? Why, why couldn't you say, I could play a couple contenders this year, you know, not get it, continue to improve and then get it next year. I know you want it like now, yeah. well, you know what I mean? Why is it so important to you? Well, I don't know. Like I've played sports like my whole life, like multiple sports, but I've never really actually cared about a sport as much as I care about spike ball. Like I really enjoy and love spike ball a ton. Like I've never actually like cared as much about anything sports wise. Mm -hmm. So I kind of just want to like take it and run with it and go as far as I can go very badly. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, you're going to see a lot of uh, Mike Garrett this year. Uh, I'm doing a fun question with the three last remaining lemon lads. Um, pertaining to we did this year 2022 we were in the Caribbean we did an individual tournament just kind of wanted to see the lay of the land here where we could play beach um, grass kind of how the experience is here with the guys not just here like my family lives here you know coming and just being a part of like a family vacation versus here with the guys uh, it's been a blast so what I'm gonna ask all the all of uh, the remaining three lemon lads is if you could pick any four players friends uh, people that we've watched online, people that you know, any, anyone. You can pick any four players that you'd like to see join us next year in 2023 to participate in the 20, 20, geez, 2023 version of the Caribbean Cup. Who would you choose? And for any reason. no re anything. Anybody at all? Anybody at all. Yep. Obviously none of us that are here. We need 15 more guys. Oh gosh, that's a tough question. Um, yeah. I guess, I mean, obviously Gabe would be cool. Gabe would here. be a blast. Yeah, um, Connor, because we play with him a ton, and he's he's pretty awesome. Um, let's see, I don't know. Put, uh, I guess Brandon, because he's he's a lemon lad, but he just didn't make it this year. Brandon Timonier, you should have been here. I don't know what you're doing. That's yeah. three, three know. solid ones. Come on. And then one more, one more, one more. Anybody? Anybody? Uh, Kyle, because he's he's fun to be around. Kyle Keenan. Kyle Keenan. Kyle Keenan. Keenan, Keenan is, is key. key. Yes. Uh, if you're in the Pennsylvania uh, tri-state area and you need a home, Keenan is key. Um, dude, we're here having a good time in the Caribbean. Anything else you want to add here before we wrap up? I think that's about it. No. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of him this year. Um, although I kind of asked him, you know, what, would it be all right if you, you know, get premiere in 2023? We're all fairly new to the scene. He will not be getting premiere in 2023. He will have it this year. I'd say probably within the next 45 days, uh, next tour stop or two for sure. So expect a lot of big things. He can serve with both hands. Beware. Mike, thanks for being on here, bro. You're well, the man. man. Lemon Lad number three is up, Ryan. Thanks for joining us here. Already on uh, episode one. Was hyped to have you back. Didn't know it would be this soon, but here we are. Oh, yeah. uh, we're in the Caribbean. 2022 Caribbean Cup. Uh, I say Caribbean for where we are. When I reference the cup, I say Caribbean. Just realize that. Pirates of the Caribbean. Spot. Yeah, kind of lame. That's but how I say it. What are we going to do? Uh, brought Ryan on to talk about the Caribbean. First time here. What are you thinking? How have you enjoyed it so far? I've liked it a lot. Uh, it was initially supposed to be pretty spike ball focused, but uh, the logistics of the beaches we went to and the crowd we're with only having five people we played around a little bit but uh, I really liked going to these fancy beaches some of the top ones in the whole entire world snorkeling around for the first time in this beautiful clear water and yeah it's been a blast spike ball wise we got in like 10 or 8 competitive games games that we kept score and we're like keeping track of our record and I think we like tied for first so that's pretty cool right let's go oh yeah <laughs> let's go we might play a couple more tomorrow we're gonna do with some sort of sunrise action uh tomorrow morning but do you think we'll get some games in tomorrow too or you think we're gonna be too tired if you get the net yeah if we get the net yeah we'll get yeah. some more wins absolutely um so we <laughs> were in episode one talking about how we were going to team up to play in the next tour series thinking it would be philadelphia um 
Turns out it's not going to be Philadelphia. It's going to be Atlanta. We're already signed up. Uh, not a ton of contender level teams signed up right now, which is kind of what it is. I hope that it gets right now. I think it's at 17, 18 range, yep. 19. Maybe it gets up into the 30s, 40s. I don't know. We're kind of 30s. close. 30s. Uh, but we're going to be in Atlanta. Never been through Atlanta. Have you? No, I don't think so. Yeah. Maybe drove through, but definitely not been there. Yeah. If you're going to be in Atlanta, um, look forward to seeing seeing you there competing with some contender level teams. It's going to be sweet. Uh, what do you think? What are your thoughts on Atlanta heading in and you and I teaming up specifically? Yeah, uh, we wanted to do Philly, but then we were just chomping at the bit to get this going again. So we saw some cheap plane tickets and we said, let's do it. So yeah, happy to be, pl be playing with Josh. Uh, playing with Mike was cool, but I've also had a good experience with Josh in a local tournament. So uh, yeah, gonna have to leave Mike for a little bit, but it is what it is. Uh, I think we're gonna go to Atlanta and look a lot better than previously. Uh, I think all the core lemons have improved on serving quite a bit and also started playing with some serious players in our local area. So serve received, we went from just seeing each other to now seeing like top servers in the country. So now we're going to go play contender and it's going to be like, oh, this is so much easier than what we're used to. Uh, yeah, I'm I'm excited for it. We're gonna start practicing pretty hard the next two weeks to polish some things up and we'll be good Absolutely, um, I guess it's a perfect time to interject. I wasn't sure how I'd get this in there But I actually banged my knee up a little bit in in Richmond Not sure. I ended up going to the orthopedic and I ended up having like a sprained MCL took like five weeks all feeling pretty much good now but I still wear the braces from time to time and while I was recovering it was brilliant and it was just awesome seeing all these uh, spike notifications and Instagram posts of all my buddies all the lads playing with guys like Connor Prelich, Ravi, Gabe, Scott Beeks you know I mean those two guys here in the middle were 50% of the finals in Richmond yeah. so all my buddies getting in good looks and uh, sitting on the couch <laughs> watching um, yeah. you know, watching TV, so it was annoying. So Probably thank you. Muted thank the group you. chat. Muted the, I did. Muted the group <laughs> chat. Don't answer the group me. Turn that <laughs> off. Delete the app for a little bit. Uh, <laughs> and that was it. That's how I had to cope with it. So it was fine. Here we are. So hope to play with those guys too uh, eventually in the next couple weeks. All right. So did that contribute to the delay in episode two? A li honestly, a little bit because I've been a little like spike, like anything spike related while you're knee or while you're dealing with an injury. It was almost like I wanted no part of it. You know what I mean? Like... Yeah. It's like after you eat something, then you throw it up and you can't like eat it for a little while. It was the same thing. Like I just dealt with this injury and didn't know how to get by it. And you have like your annoying ass friends messaging you like, <laughs> look what we did. And look at this cut serve I hit on so-and-so and he can't rece receive my lefty um, anymore. And you're just like, yeah, dude, like, just kiss my ass. Don't message me anymore. So kiss that's, my MCO. Kiss my MCO. <laughs> Dang it. I know. Freaking <laughs> A. Okay. Let's talk about this. So. I hurt my knee playing on turf. We're playing here on sand, and then there's grass. Let's talk specifically just grass to sand. How do you feel like the game changes playing on grass versus sand? Sand in optimal conditions, flat sand. Flat sand, uh, you might be a little more inclined to diving, maybe because you have to, not be, like it's also comfortable to dive on grass, but like you're not moving as well on sand. Uh, I love grass way more than sand. I think sand, uh, obviously you're not covering as much ground, so it gets pretty body defense heavy. But also, I saw this weekend, there's even times where like you get a body touch and the teammate doesn't get the second touch because they're like two strides less on sand. Uh, but I think it doesn't matter until you get to kind of like a good quality contender level. And then it matters that like grass versus sand stuff. but like. If you asked me six months ago, it probably wouldn't make much of a difference. Fair. Uh, so transitioning into this question in, ter uh, in terms of the 2023 Caribbean Cup, what do you think we could do to obviously A, bring more people along, B, you know, make it as competitive but improve it and, and make it kind of feel more like a tournament and not just a day on the beach spiking and you know what I mean? Yeah. How, how do you think we could improve it for next year? Uh, so what happened with us is we played yesterday on a larger beach that was pretty flat 
and we had four balls. We kind of used an honor system with the no hit zone. Most of us are used to it, so like stepping far under the net and stuff would like be almost uncomfortable, like not automatic. So that that went fine. But then today we we forgot a bunch of balls. We only had one ball, and we were playing on a slant, and there wasn't much sand. So I think the biggest thing for next year would be finding a great beach location, like wide beach, uh, not much slant, and basically just having the teams. I think if we got here and there was eight plus teams where you could actually make a bracket, everything would just work out, as long as you have a big enough location. Because once you have eight teams, everyone's serious about it, and you just hop on some tournament app and you say team one plays team eight, two plays seven, whatever, and do like yeah. even could do like pool play like a round robin yeah pool play and then yeah. and then rank everybody yeah I I think it'd be fun we're gonna try and run it back next year probably around the same time flights aren't as expensive I try and maybe be a little bit better next year with not landing in between tour stop dates if we really want to try and get others here uh, I feel like this date actually was okay but it was kind of smack in between a couple big things going on in the round net community the qualifiers, with the, qualifiers yeah. the Seattle and stuff um, so maybe that could be timed a little better. Uh, but we had to wait a while for the dates. Remember, they didn't come out right away, the beginning of the year, and we kind of have to book something like this well in advance. But all that to be said, we've had a, we've had a blast. I've had a really good time having the guys here. Um, talked to Mike before you, asked him the same question. I'd like, I'd like to get your take on this. You could ask any four players to come next year and participate in this. You know, who would they be? And okay. you, heard, you heard his responses, so anybody <laughs> but, but the four he said, who would they be? Yeah, I'm going with... New York Josh, <laughs> not sure what his last name is, du Deutsch? Josh du Deutsch, Deutsch. Yeah. Uh, Josh D. We'll go Andrew Rotier, Rotier. Oh, I love it. Uh, what other lemons have there been? There's been Ed Glassman. That'd be an interesting take. Dude, there's, uh, there's no Iron Man runs here. He's not coming. <laughs> no, but the sand, like, he probably moves faster on sand than he would on grass. That's true. It'd just be unstoppable. He might, he'd probably be the player that would benefit the most from this becoming sand absolutely uh, it wouldn't affect this game at yeah. all and who's the last one uh we'll go jake archie yeah oh my he, gosh he's uh everyone on this list plus people that have been lemons are everyone i've ever played a tournament with so i yeah, love full it. circle full circle keeping it close to home yeah not uh, many names you guys would recognize but not many recognizable yeah. names but honorary lemons exactly great guys uh, so yeah, we're, we're just touching base with all the lemons here that came on the trip. Um, just get a couple minutes with everybody to talk about our, our experience. We're headed into Atlanta, headed into Philadelphia, um, and so on. And whatever the summer brings, whether that's a couple local tournaments on the beach and uh, a, bunch of great, a bunch of great things. Um, so Rye, I appreciate you taking some time here. We'll be back on again and uh, we'll do the damn thing. Yep. I appreciate it, bro. June 2022 premiere. See you then. All right, y'all. Last but not least, the last of the uh, Lemon Lads here to join the pod uh, is my pal, Jake Mottershead. Uh, Jake and I met in the middle of 2021. August, August right? August 2021. forget. End of August, early September, I Something think. Like early September. Uh, we met via the Spikeball app, and uh, I thought it'd be a fun place to start because he tells the story really well. Jake, yeah. what was your take on how we met via the Spikeball app? Mind you, first ever person I've ever met on the Spikeball app just from like networking. You know, threw out a couple lines of like, who can play here, who can play there, never heard back from anybody. He was the first person who posted a, uh, an event, and I won't give too much away, but take it from there, bro. What, what do you, what's your recollection of what happened? Uh, so Kyle and I, who we mentioned earlier, had been trying to play Spikeball like a little more competitive. And so we had like gone to a pickup, whatever. And it was funny enough, we drove around 45 minutes because someone posted something and we went and nobody was there. So we had a very bad experience that with it. Too. We, there was even a basketball court. We happened to have a basketball, but we were just so disappointed we didn't get to play that we, did, we just went home. That's and so cool. I was like, for once we're like, instead of driving 45 minutes to try and play with people, how about we try posting something? So like we put something on the app and Probably like two minutes after we posted it, 
<laughs> this guy texts me, whatever, asking all these questions. We're like, what the? This is weirdo. It was like, all of a sudden, he sounded like someone who was like, I don't even know. Just yeah. wanted to know everything about the game and mm-hmm. it sounded like he thought we were like amazing or something. Yeah, I did. And so we were talking whatever. And so it gave me the impression that like, oh, we'd get a bunch of people to come to this pickup, whatever. And that did not happen. He was the only person to message us, whatever. So we weren't even sure if we were gonna get four. But we finally got four and it was a pretty cool experience. We got to meet his friend Sean and uh, Josh's girlfriend Amanda. That was it. It was a blast. We showed up. He referenced me asking a ton of questions because I just got super into spike ball with my first tournament over the summer and couldn't find anyone locally that would play. Um, so when I found somebody and then he answered, I was like, yo, I'm really into this. Um, what's the key to you know playing an intermediate, getting out of that, playing in advance, getting out of that? And he was kind of just like, hey, relax, I don't know. <laughs> and so we were kind of on the same wavelength and we got together. Uh, and played and and it was a it really was fun it was a blast this it was like the first real connection that I made outside of just playing with friends that I had and uh, it it was really fun and he his buddy Kyle Keenan um, has been really good guy to get to know as well Sean Champion a good friend of mine the four of us played in in around Ben around Ben Salem PA right it was a little outside no it was it was in there yeah Yeah. Uh, we had a blast so he and I have been playing ever since and we've linked up with uh, Ryan, um, just shortly thereafter, we met Brandon, we met others in the city close in like Philly, uh, then we linked up with Mike, and uh, it's been a blast. Mike introduced us to Charlie, we then met others in the area via some local tournaments, and uh, dude, it's it's been fun, it's been really fun. So I have a couple questions for Jake. Episode one, we talked about our experience in Richmond. Jake was, the, you know, the other 50% of Smoke and Mirrors, he and I went four and three, uh, in the pool play, got a first round matchup with a pretty good team, ended up losing to them in a close, close match. They went on to co- somewhat get near to getting Premier, a couple points away. So he and I really didn't have a bad run for our first ever contender level tourney. I mean, you wouldn't say it was a bad run, would you? Maybe the first three games of pool play. Yeah, they were a slow we start. And more of a, rough. Yeah, we started out rough, dude. We started out rough. Um, so I, that really is my first question for you. And I asked the same thing for Mike. They got to hear my take. Um, I kind of want your take. Not, not like I said, you don't have to go crazy in depth, but give me like a pool play breakdown and then a, our, we only had one round of our bracket play breakdown and from your opinion, your perspective. Uh, pool play basically came down to us completely forgetting everything we knew as a team. <laughs> we, we almost never hit on two. And I think in the first game, I think we went on three or four times and I think we maybe killed it once, like, and we just shot ourselves in the foot over and over again with stupid mistakes, whether it was hitting it into the rim on a nice set or just completely botching a set. And so things just, everything was going wrong. Yeah. We eventually uh, started to loosen up a little bit and play more of our game, but even then, up until the playoffs, I don't think we played how we usually played. We didn't. We really didn't. Slow start, compounding issues, couldn't get the serves really to land. You were hitting more serves than I was, but we really didn't hit our groove. So what do you think about our, our, our first bracket game against the Nittany Lions, Nittany Nation, I forget what their name was. Give me who, how good you think they were, like a breakdown of who they are as players, and then how you think the, the game one and game two went. They were overall really good. Uh, I think us as a team had better chemistry than them. We just made a couple more errors like on plays that we should have gotten, like the defensive breaks and everything. Uh, Their serving was definitely better than ours, especially more consistent with like forcing us into bad positions. But if we had just converted some of the plays, especially we had a couple easy plays that we just let slip through our fingers. Because, I mean, we lost 21-18, 21-19. So those couple points were the difference in winning and losing. Absolutely. I think those were. The, I think that's perfect. Um, I didn't think that they necessarily outplayed us uh, in terms of skill. I think that they just made less errors than we did, and maybe they were putting us into harder spots um, with their first and second serve. So I agree. I agree. I don't think they're better than us per se, and I'd love to play them again. I know that the way things roll out now, with you going into Philadelphia with Mike, we probably won't meet them again, me and you together, until we are all premier. Yeah. But. 
when we do, that'll be fun. I look forward to that, that matchup again. Uh, I think we're all, we're all improving a lot. Um, I, I think I actually heard that they're not playing in Philadelphia, mm-hmm. so which would be interesting. So we'll be rooting for them, but that's really my Br- Richmond breakdown. I wanted to get your sort of take. Um, so now let's go right to Philly on 611. You're playing with Mike, mm-hmm. and I think that you guys are going to be very dangerous. Your team name is going to be? Uh, I think we finalized it. It's come and go. Come and go. You want to give us, I think it's important and it's funny, <laughs> but a reason why the name is kind of apropos, like why it works. Uh, a lot of it stems from well, Mike and I are both kind of streaky, especially from the service line. If we're not landing serves, we can't even do put on serves sometimes. <laughs> but if yeah. we're landing, like then it's all trouble. of a sudden, then if we're both hitting them, then it, we're like almost unbeatable. I agree. I agree. So it depends. If you get their A game, it's trouble. If you get their B to C level game, you got, you know, you may be taking home a W. But w- so what do you think? What do you think about Philadelphia? How you guys will, you've played now a one contender level tournament. You're only going to be like a month and a half from that. Well, I guess closer to two. But how do you think you guys will, will do in Philadelphia if there's end up being like 50 or so teams? Mm, I don't know. I'm someone who doesn't like to speculate on how well I think I'm going to do, especially because mm-hmm. you don't know what the level of competition is, mm-hmm. and everyone can have a good or bad day, so you never know how I'm feeling that day. Uh, hopefully, I'm feeling good, and I'm sure Mike will make me feel better, yes. especially if he's hitting some serves when I can't, so then it will help make it easier on me to like find my serve. I love it. He's a... Yeah. He's not a big talker, this guy. He's just going to kind of show up and and let it roll. Um, Okay, let's go back. You don't want to talk about, Mike, you guys in Philadelphia because you're humble and you just want to let it ride. That's cool. Let's talk about about me and you then because it seems to be a little bit easier to talk about now because it's done. It's finished. Um, I was the first uh, contender. I was your first ever contender level partner. Mm. So that's title no one also have. So just remember that. You know Uh, what I'm saying? That's locked in. Um, what did you think that you and I did well as a team? What made me and you a good team? Uh, just our communication on defense, on being able to adapt, I think, mid-game to like figure out whatever the other team's main shot or like what they wanted to do. We were able to adapt and like play off each other pretty well. So, yeah, I like that a lot. So, like, find out sort of what their strength is, try and neutralize it and not mm-hmm. let them beat us with their best shots. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's yes, perfect. That's exactly what we tried to do. That's what we try to do when we play because um, he's a better server than I am. When he's landing serves, they're dangerous. He's also left-handed, so he's a little unorthodox. We're not really known for getting up and hitting six, seven aces in a game and winning like that. We're really not. We're going to kind of outwork you and make you a little bit frustrated. Like every time I hit the ball on the net, they're getting a touch or there's a body up and then we're smashing it. I think they're actually more demoralizing sometimes than, than a serve ace. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It's kind of like a mental battle. But yeah, that's how, that's how we work together. We had a lot of fun. We'll play together again, um, probably both when we snag Premier, hopefully, in the next couple months. Uh, did we touch on the Caribbean or did we just jump right to it? I don't think we talked about the Caribbean. Yeah. Talk to me about the Caribbean then. It's, just, it's your first time here, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Furthest, furthest, time, furthest distance away from home? Yeah, yeah. Definitely. What, are, what are your thoughts on, on the Caribbean? Uh, I mean, it's pretty awesome. I've always been someone who loves to go to the beach. Like, it's always nice getting a nice tan, too. So it's like everything about the atmosphere is just a great time. What about the, uh, what about the early 9 a.m. yoga? Uh, that's fine. <laughs> Mike may not like it, but I don't know. It's nice and relaxing. Helps me stretch out things I usually don't stretch out, yeah. especially because I don't want to get injured. True. Yeah. It's been nice. It's been great having him here, having all the guys here. Um, not a ton with this pod. Just wanted to give you guys a little taste of what we're doing in the Caribbean. We're having a good time. Um, we, we are going to come back next year. We're looking to build on it. A uh, it cl- couple closing remarks would be, the housing here next year, if you come with us, will be free. Everyone, no one here paid to be here um, in terms of where we're staying. I have, like I said, I have some family that lives here, so everything would be free. You just have to play, pay for the plane ride over, um, get down here. It's right near Puerto Rico-ish. Um, it's probably two hours from Florida. That usually seems to be like the, con- the connector that you would look for. So we're gonna be advertising it more in, at the beginning of 2023 to get a couple. 
it's just us five. I had a freaking great time. If next year it's you know us and three or four more guys, fine with me. I've had a blast. But we're gonna try and get some higher, higher level guys out here too. I think as we become a little bit, we earn like our name, our, earn our stripes in the community too. You know what I'm saying? Buddy yeah. Hammond makes this post and says, "Who wants to come with me to the Caribbean to play spike ball?" You know, it's gonna gain some traction and stuff. So, hopefully, we get there too. We'll see. But we had a good time. Either way, you got next, something to add? Go next ahead. year, yeah. uh, we're not playing basketball barefoot again. The day before. Yeah. yeah. Not yeah. Everyone get blisters. Yeah. Uh, I also give him credit. He said on the first day, he said, I'm not wearing any sunscreen and I will not get burnt. And I was just like, yeah, dude, this is a, not the same sun as New Jersey. <laughs> and uh, he was right. He didn't put a drop of sunscreen on. Not and put sunscreen on. A little bit, but you don't even look fried. I'm impressed. All right. We've asked everybody, uh, four dream players or just guys you think would be cool to have uh, in the Caribbean next year for the Caribbean Cup 2023 edition, who would they be? Um, one that comes to mind is probably Scott. Uh, Kyle and I actually picked him up for a tournament that Kyle and I played, and we actually lost to Mike in the first round for that tournament. God dang. And so it was cool to meet someone from, I guess, another country, probably one of the first people. So mm -hmm. it was really cool to see it, hear his accent too. Scott, and we're talking about Scott Beaks, yeah. right? Sweet. Yep, Scott definitely. Beaks, number one. Uh, uh, Dan Banowski or Bono, however you want to say his name. Beast. Call him. Yeah. Uh, he's pretty cool. He may be short, but he's got a lot of energy and he's just a fun guy to be around. Heck yeah. Um, someone else. Oh, it's fun to mess with. Uh, Danny. He's part of, I think, Endurance. Is that their Endurance round net. Yep. Premier? Yep. Yeah, it's always fun when I get to ace him and vice versa when he aces me. It's always nice. fun to mess with him. That's three. One more. One more guy. Uh, probably uh, Brendan Minogue. Uh, he's a guy who just like it's a great time with him. It's always fun when he shows up, even though he kind of ditched us this past winter a little bit. You know, True. didn't want to show up. Brendan also made that long trek to play with us. Drove like an hour forty-five and then played for like two hours and went an hour and forty-five back, which is a badass move, Brendan. Because you know we enjoy playing with you too, man, and. Uh, you know, we I did the same thing. I mean, every time I play with these guys in Philly, I drive like an hour and fifteen. It's, it's nice. It's fun to play with 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 guys at or above your your level. You know, and it's fun. So, dude, those are four sweet uh, selections. Um, I'm gonna add a couple, and then what we're gonna do is when we end up posting this podcast, I'm gonna tag some of these people um, on the Facebook page, get some of these names out. Uh, a couple of our local guys that I'd love to have here next year playing with us, depending on how you know things go with lives, kids, wives, that kind of stuff. Um, and uh, Anthony Torigno, I'd love to have you here. You've already been here. You're like a brother, so you better be here, you bastard. Uh, Sean Champion, you better be here as well. Uh, you're dating my sister for Christmas sakes, you know what I'm saying? You owe me one. Um, and Adam, Adam, I'd love for you to be here, man. It'd be a blast. Um, so those are the three, my three local bros that I'd love to have. Stretching out into the community a little bit more. You know what I mean? Shoot for the stars. See if you see what you can snag. Buddy Hammond, I think you'd be a great time here. I see you traveling all over the place. Content here would be insane. You go snorkeling, you see all kinds of sea turtles, stingrays, octopus. Bang, you put all that, you throw a spike ball underwater, you just go with it, man. It'd be fun. It'd be fun to have you here. And one of my favorite players who I met uh, in Richmond, uh, Rahul Murthy, would be a blast to have you here as well, just to get some high level, high level play, but also a good time. So we're going to throw it out there. We're trying to open it up to, a, we, this year was five. Next year, we're going to try and go to 20 guys, 10 teams. Um, and yeah, that's really a roundup. Anything, anything for you, bro, to add as we finish? No, I don't think so. Well, man, I appreciate you coming on. Uh, we, we'll be ready. We'll see you in Philadelphia. We'll see you in Atlanta. Team name again? Uh, come and go. Come and go. We'll be there. Spike Lemonade, Ryan and I will be there. You saw um, Charlie earlier. Hopefully we'll see him in, in Philly as well. If not, you'll see him at some point in time. We're back on the podcast. You'll see him pushing ice cream uh, in Wildwood doing the damn thing. But it, it's been a blast. Jake, I appreciate you being here, bro. Yeah, definitely. Later. Thanks for having me. Yep.
too easy. That's a hander. You were not kidding. I just ran into your back. I just ran into your back. No, I'm being dead serious. I'm being dead serious. No, I just ran into your back. We call, we call hinders a poolside tabletop. We got video replay. Ryan, what do you think about that? Literally, no. Pause it. Pause it.